A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Lord, great and awesome God, you who keep your merciful covenant toward those who love you and observe your commandments. We have sinned, been wicked and done evil. We have rebelled and departed from your commandments and your laws. We have not obeyed your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and all the people of the land. Justice, O Lord, is on your side. We are shamefaced even to this day, we, the men of Judah, the residents of Jerusalem, and all Israel, near and far, and all the countries to which you have scattered them because of their treachery toward you. O Lord, we are shamefaced, like our kings, our princes, and our fathers for having sinned against you. But yours, O Lord, our God, are compassion and forgiveness. Yet we rebelled against you and paid no heed to your command, O Lord our God, to live by the law you gave us through your servants, the prophets. The word of the Lord. Lord, do not deal with us according to our sins. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us for we are brought very low. Lord, do not deal with us to Help us, O God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. Lord, do not deal with us to our Let the prisoner's sign come before you. With your great power, free those doomed to death. Then we, your people, and the sheep of your pasture, We'll give thanks to you forever. Through all generations, we will declare your praise. Lord, do not deal with us The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. As we enter into this second full week of Lent, the challenge of the words of Scripture continued to be there for us. We, 40 days might seem like a long time, but it really isn't, and there's still a lot of work to be done in our spiritual journeys in this life, so the readings are carefully chosen through the centuries. Many of these readings have been used for so long in the church's liturgy during Lent. We are sinners. Daniel's reminding us of that today. His prayer that he speaks as he speaks to the awesome and great God is an acknowledgement of the brokenness, both personally as well as as a whole, as the whole human race. We have sinned. We have been wicked. We have done evil. And so what are our options? Well, the one option is 
to face the justice of God, and that's not always a good one, since to sin means to die eternally. And so I think I'd prefer to go to the other option, and that is to throw myself at the feet of our Lord and say, be merciful to me, a sinner. Or in the words of our responsorial psalm this morning, Lord, do not deal with me according to my sins. We're asking God to be merciful. And that leads us then to the gospel. Jesus, who is the word of God, Jesus, who is the one to show us the way to the Father, who is just. But Jesus is also the mercy of God. And that's why we must throw ourselves at his feet. But it's not a blank check that our Lord writes for us, so to speak. There is duty and responsibility on our parts if we want to enjoy that mercy, and our Lord makes it very plain in the gospel today. And the words of the Lord's Prayer remind us of that as well. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. In other words, if we want God's mercy, then we need to show mercy. Now, what does that mean? Because that can be rather abstract to say that one is merciful or one shows mercy. Other words, maybe we use our compassion. The Latin word for mercy is misericordia, a miserable heart, a heart that's sorrowful, a heart that's wroth with pain and suffering. And when we show mercy, what we're really doing is what also our Lord is saying is mercy begins with, we must stop judging, judging others. And the reason is really simple, because only one person, the divine person of God, the Father, can see into the hearts of everyone and know everyone, all the billions and billions of us all at once. Only God knows the pain the struggles, the obstacles, the handicaps, the temptations, the weaknesses, the addictions, everything that we carry as baggage that the normal sight of human beings cannot see amongst our fellow people. I caught myself yesterday judging. I was driving over to church for the beginning of the mission, and as I was stopped at a stop sign over here in town. A rather rickety old pickup truck went by, had all kinds of look like junky furniture in the back. And I looked at the guy behind the wheel, probably was maybe someone in their mid or late 20s, and he looked like the most miserable person in the world. And immediately I judged him. And I said, just look at that guy. Who knows what kind of life he must be living. Well, maybe I should have listened to those words because then I reminded myself, yeah, what kind of life might he be living? A life that might be filled with sorrow. Maybe he lost his job or maybe he lost his wife or he's in a broken relationship. He's very sad and distraught right now. Who am I to judge? Who are any of us to judge? Only God alone can judge. And so we must stop condemning we must stop judging. And there is the beginning of mercy. And then we have to pray to see with the eyes of Jesus, not always completely because we're not him, but to see like the eyes of Jesus beyond the externals and to know that everyone we encounter, whether they be close to us as family and friends or people we never have ever seen before in our lives. We're all carrying stuff within us, heavy stuff sometimes, the misery of the heart. And that's why we show mercy, because God shows us mercy, because God knows us through and through. 
So as we begin this new day together, let's examine deeply into our lives the judgment calls we've made, past and present, and let's move beyond that. Let's pray for the grace to move beyond that so that indeed we can be forgiving as the Lord's Prayer reminds us each day, yes, forgive us our sins, but as we forgive the sins of others. God is mercy. With confidence in the goodness and mercy of our Father in heaven, we bring our needs and prayers to the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ. That all members of the church will generously share God's love with others and have hearts that are ever willing to forgive, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our elected leaders may exercise wisdom and fairness as they work to eliminate violence and hatred in all forms, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those affected by violence in their lives may feel the healing touch of Jesus and find strength in the loving and prayerful support of their community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we in this faith community who have been shown mercy by God might in turn be merciful to those who have wronged us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's specially remember our Holy Father, Pope Francis, on this day of the anniversary of his election. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all our deceased brothers and sisters in faith, especially in this Mass. Let us remember the repose of the soul of Bill Blaumeiser. And also let us remember the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father John J. Sprangers, and Father Ralph H. Hermson, and for all our loved ones, that they now may know the splendor and the glory of heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring these needs to you, begging you to grant them in your mercy and goodness. We ask this in Christ's name, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>